A silent hunter, a steel leviathan displacing over 10,000 tons, glides through the ocean depths for months without ever needing to surface for fuel. This colossal machine, heavier than 2,000 large elephants and longer than a football field, is Australia's future nuclear-powered submarine fleet, a project so immense it is estimated to cost up to 368 billion Australian dollars. This is not just about building ships, it is about mastering the most complex engineering challenge on Earth. These incredible vessels, known as SSN AUKUS submarines, are designed to be stealthy giants, incorporating cutting-edge technology from three powerful nations, Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. They will be powered by a Rolls-Royce nuclear reactor so advanced it will not need refueling for its entire 30-year lifespan. This means they can stay hidden, deep beneath the waves, for missions stretching across thousands of kilometers. But how do you build such a massive, complex, and deadly silent hunter? And what incredible engineering secrets lie beneath its sleek, silent hull? This incredible journey did not begin overnight. For decades, Australia relied on conventional submarines, but the world changed, and with it, Australia's defense needs. Australia, a vast island nation, recognized a critical shift in the Indo-Pacific region. The strategic environment became more complex, demanding a new kind of undersea capability. Their existing Collins-class submarines, while capable, were diesel-electric. This meant they needed to surface or snorkel more often to recharge batteries, limiting their stealth and endurance. Australia needed something faster, able to stay underwater for much longer, and carry heavier loads to protect its vast maritime interests. This led to the realization that only nuclear-powered submarines, or SSNs, could meet these evolving challenges. On September 15, 2021, a new security partnership was announced. AUKUS, bringing together Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. While no country was named directly, this alliance was widely seen as a response to growing concerns about China's influence in the Indo-Pacific. The AUKUS announcement was not without drama. It meant Australia had to cancel a massive $65 billion deal with France to build 12 conventional submarines. This decision, made without France's knowledge, sparked outrage, with the French foreign minister calling it a stab in the back. France even recalled its ambassadors. Australia later paid 555 million euros in the settlement. The AUKUS agreement is unique because the United States and the United Kingdom are sharing their highly sensitive nuclear propulsion technology with Australia, something they have only done with each other since 1958. It is crucial to understand that Australia will acquire conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines, not nuclear weapons, and will not develop a domestic civil nuclear industry. But what exactly makes these nuclear submarines so different, so powerful, and so incredibly complex to build? Nuclear-powered submarines are fundamentally different from conventional ones. Instead of burning diesel fuel, they use a small nuclear reactor to create heat. This heat boils water, making steam, which then spins massive turbines to turn the submarine's propeller and generate electricity. It is like having a tiny, self-contained power plant deep inside the ocean. The SSN AUKUS submarines will be powered by a Rolls-Royce pressurized water reactor, specifically the Core H design. What is truly revolutionary about this reactor is its lifespan. It is designed to last for about 25 to 30 years without needing new fuel. Think about that. A submarine can operate for decades without having to return to port just to refuel its engine. This gives it unlimited range, limited only by the crew's food and supplies. This unprecedented endurance makes them far more effective for long-duration missions, pushing material science and manufacturing to their limits to ensure such a long-lasting component. 
Safety is paramount with nuclear power. These reactors are built with multiple layers of protection, a concept called defense in depth. This means there are many backup systems and physical barriers to prevent any release of radioactive material. The fuel itself is designed to withstand extreme forces, much greater than an earthquake. There are four main barriers, the fuel, the strong, all-welded primary system that holds the reactor's cooling water, the thick reactor compartment, and finally, the submarine's outer hull. Even if one barrier fails, others are there to contain everything. These systems are so effective that crew members actually receive less radiation exposure than a person gets from natural background radiation at home. But what good is endless power if everyone knows where you are? The true genius of these submarines lies in their ability to disappear. Stealth for a submarine is not about being invisible to the eye. It is about being invisible to detection systems like sonar. The first step is the submarine's shape, a smooth, teardrop-like hull that reduces drag and turbulence, which are major sources of noise underwater. Think of it like a perfectly designed racing car for the ocean, slipping through the water with minimal disturbance. Next, engineers use special noise-reducing materials. The hull is covered with anechoic tiles, often made of rubber, that absorb sound waves instead of reflecting them back to enemy sonar. It is like wrapping the submarine in a giant sound-dampening blanket. Inside, machinery components are isolated with rubber mountings and vibration-damping materials to prevent internal noises from reaching the water. Even the internal layout is carefully planned to minimize sound. This combination of design, materials, and systems demonstrates a complex engineering challenge where every component's acoustic signature must be minimized. The propulsion system itself is designed for silence. Nuclear submarines often use electric motors for movement, which are much quieter than noisy diesel engines. These motors turn a special type of propeller called a pump jet propulsor which is enclosed to reduce noise and cavitation, the noisy bubbles that form around fast-moving propellers. Finally, operating at deeper depths helps. Sound travels differently in deeper water and can be absorbed by layers where temperature changes rapidly, known as the thermocline. By staying below this layer, submarines can effectively hide from detection. They also rely heavily on passive sonar, listening for other vessels without making any sound of their own. A silent hunter is formidable, but a silent hunter with powerful teeth is unstoppable. The SSN AUKUS submarines will be armed with a formidable array of weapons. They will carry the Mark 48 heavyweight torpedoes, which are about 5.8 meters long weigh around 1,587 kilograms, and can hit targets up to 45.75 kilometers away while traveling at speeds up to 120 kilometers per hour. To put that in perspective, a Mark 48 torpedo is about as long as a small car and weighs as much as two average cars. Beyond torpedoes, these submarines will feature a common vertical launch system, or VLS, this is a first for UK attack submarines and allows them to fire missiles like the Tomahawk cruise missile. These missiles are truly long range, capable of striking targets over 1600 kilometers away. Imagine hitting a target from Sydney all the way to Melbourne, and then some. The Tomahawk can even be redirected mid-flight and send back images of the target area, giving commanders real-time information. To find their targets and manage their missions, the SSN AUKUS will use an evolved version of the AN-BYG-1 Combat Management System. This advanced system, already used in US Virginia-class and Australia's Collins-class submarines, acts as the submarine's brain, processing information from various sensors, creating a clear picture of the underwater environment, and helping the crew make critical decisions. Combined with sophisticated sonar systems, these submarines will be masters of undersea warfare, intelligence gathering, and strike missions. This shared technology means that Australian, UK, and US submarines can work together more easily, sharing information and even parts. 
This creates a stronger, more unified force for missions. But all that power and stealth would be useless without an incredibly strong body to contain it, especially when diving into the crushing depths of the ocean. This is the part that holds all the sensitive equipment and, most importantly, the crew. It must withstand the immense hydrostatic pressure of the ocean, which tries to crush the submarine from all sides as it dives deeper. Even a tiny deviation, like a 0.5% out of roundness from a perfect circle, can reduce its strength by over 35%. Building this hull is an engineering marvel. It requires extremely high-strength steels, which are notoriously difficult to bend, shape, and weld. Every weld and every component must be perfect. Quality control during manufacturing is absolutely critical, as any flaw could lead to catastrophic failure. To ensure this structural integrity, the U.S. Navy developed the Submarine Safety Program, or subsafe after the tragic loss of the USS Thresher in 1963. The USS Thresher was lost with all hands during a deep test dive, believed to be due to a pipe failure and issues with the ballast tank system. This disaster led the Navy to reevaluate the methods used to build its submarines. Subsafe is a rigorous quality assurance system that covers every aspect of a submarine's design, materials, manufacturing, and testing. It ensures that the hull remains watertight and that the submarine can recover from unexpected flooding. Every single part, every weld, and every procedure for systems exposed to sea pressure is tightly controlled and documented with traceable quality evidence from the raw materials all the way to installation. Since Subsafe began, only one non-certified submarine has been lost, proving its incredible success. This commitment to hull integrity and safety is a cornerstone of nuclear submarine design, allowing these vessels to operate in the most demanding environments on Earth. Building these incredibly complex machines is not just about the submarines themselves, it is about building entire industrial ecosystems on land. Australia's nuclear submarine program is a massive undertaking on land as much as it is at sea. The primary construction hub will be the Osborne Naval Shipyard in South Australia. This facility is undergoing a huge transformation, set to triple in size to become one of the most advanced shipbuilding centers in the world. The shipyard itself spans over 175 hectares, an area larger than 250 football fields. It includes massive buildings, like Building 22, which is 80 meters high, with a footprint of 170 by 50 meters, large enough to assemble two frigates. A key piece of equipment at Osborne is its Synchrolift, a giant ship elevator. This impressive piece of engineering is 156 meters long and 34 meters wide, capable of lifting an astounding 13,000 tons out of the water. To give you a sense of scale, that is like lifting 130 fully loaded semi-trucks at once. Beyond construction, Australia also needs to prepare to host and maintain these nuclear giants. HMAS Stirling, a naval base in Western Australia, is undergoing significant upgrades. From as early as 2027, it will host the Submarine Rotational Force, West, with one UK and up to four US nuclear-powered submarines on rotation. This means major improvements to piers and wharves, including the 314-meter-long Diamantina Pier, which is longer than three football fields laid end-to-end. -end. New facilities, including a controlled industrial facility for managing low-level radioactive waste, are also being built. The total cost for the Stirling expansion is estimated at 8 billion Australian dollars over 10 years. This dual-track approach means Australia first learns to host and maintain nuclear submarines, then transitions to building them, reducing risk and building expertise incrementally. This program is not just about steel and concrete, it is about people. It is expected to create around 20,000 jobs across Australia over the next 30 years, from engineers and welders to nuclear specialists. 
Significant investments are being made in training programs, including 4,000 new university places in STEM fields, and a new skills and training academy is being developed. Australian workers are already gaining hands-on experience at U.S. shipyards like Pearl Harbor, learning the complex skills needed to build and maintain these advanced vessels. What do you think about Australia's bold move into nuclear submarines? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this deep dive fascinating, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more engineering marvels, and turn on notifications so you do not miss our next adventure.